What's up guys? Welcome back to another educational video. Make sure you tap the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, you probably are. But if you aren't, tap that subscribe button or is it here, is it here? I don't know, I can't remember. And leave a comment for the algorithm. Al Gore endorses this video. No, he doesn't. This week, I wanna talk about fiber types and specific training protocols for different fiber types of muscles. In human beings, we basically have a couple different fiber types. You have your type one fibers, which are your slow twitch fibers, which are smaller, tend to be more oxidative, and are typically less fatigable. Then your type two fibers, which are considered fast twitch fibers, which tend to be bigger, more fatigable, and more glycolytic. There's also intermediate fibers, and there can be fiber type shifts between the various fibers. That being said, most of the shifts are kind of going from a more glycolytic or type two fiber to that intermediate fiber. That tends to be the most common shift that we see, but others can occur in certain situations. One of the things that's been proposed over the years is this idea that you should be training specific muscles with specific rep ranges based on the distribution of fiber types. For example, if you have a muscle that tends to have more fast twitch fibers, you should train that with high loads, low reps, because you're preferentially targeting those fast twitch, large muscle fibers. Whereas if you have a muscle that has more slow twitch fibers, you should do higher reps with less weight because you're preferentially targeting those slow twitch muscle fibers. I've been pretty skeptical of this kind of idea from the perspective that based on the recruitment principle, which is that fiber types are recruited in order from slowest to fastest and basically going to fatigue regardless of the number of repetitions that you do should maximally recruit all muscle fibers, I was pretty skeptical about whether or not this would make a difference. But we didn't really have a study that looked at it until Brad Schoenfeld, one of the leading researchers in muscle hypertrophy in the world, if not the leading researcher, did a study a couple years ago. And this is a study that we just reviewed in our latest issue of REPS, which is Research Explained in Practical Summaries, BioLane's monthly research review, where we review five studies that relate to nutrition or exercise, and we break them down in a way that's super palatable, just like I do here, but we go deeper and give you more details. And it's a really great publication if you're looking to take your knowledge to the next level, but you feel like you're not equipped to read and interpret studies well. So this latest issue of REPS of July 20. 2022, we covered it in depth and you can check it out with the link in the description. So how did they test this? Basically what they did was they said, if we look at the calf muscles, the gastrocnemius is more fast twitch fibers, whereas the soleus, which is the muscle that's kind of under the gastroc, is predominantly slow twitch fibers. And you can target those different muscles with different exercises. So for example, when you have your legs straight, or you're doing like a standing calf raise, or a donkey calf raise, that is primarily targeting the gastrocnemius. Whereas if you're doing a seated calf raise, it's more emphasis on the soleus. So the idea was we can do a study where we have people either do high or low loads with low or high reps doing either bent leg calf raises or straight leg calf raises. And if this theory is correct, we should see better hypertrophy of the soleus for the people who are doing the higher rep leg exercises. And we should see better hypertrophy of the gastrocnemius for people who are doing the straight leg lower rep, heavier exercises. And what's really cool about the study design that we pointed out in reps is that each person served as their own control. Now, why is that important? Each individual has different genetics, different levels of hormones, has different levels of satellite cells, all things which could influence muscle growth. So what the researchers did was they took one leg and made it the control leg, and then the other leg was the leg that was being tested. So they could compare it within the person. In one leg, perhaps they're doing light high reps on the gastroc for straight leg exercises and doing heavy low reps on the soleus, which you would think would produce inferior results. And then on the other leg, they might be doing high reps for the exercises targeting the soleus and low reps with high loads for the exercises targeting gastrocnemius. Both groups were taking the exercises to close to fatigue or failure. So they were very hard sets in both 
groups. Whether it was low load with high reps or high load with low reps, regardless, the sets were taking close to fatigue. So what did they find? Well, they found that the hypertrophy was basically the same for all groups. That means if they were looking at the soleus hypertrophy, it was pretty much the same between people who did low load with high reps versus people who did high load for low reps. And in the gastroc, vice versa. So what this really highlights is what we've been saying across the last few videos about training. It's about the number of hard sets you do. If you're going to use different rep schemes, taking the exercise close to failure or fatigue, then it is about specific rep schemes. What does this mean for you? High reps and low reps can both have a place in a training program, but more from a novelty and fatigue management perspective than from a, well, let's train this way to activate these specific fiber types. It doesn't appear like that actually makes any difference in hypertrophy. So the great part about that is if you enjoy doing heavy weights with low reps, you can do that and still get great hypertrophy in muscles that are mostly slow twitch and vice versa. If you like light high rep training, get that real good burn. You can still do that for muscles that are predominantly fast twitch and apparently get the same results. Now, if you guys enjoy these study breakdowns, I highly recommend subscribing to Reps. Every month, we review five studies that are impactful for nutrition and exercise, and we break them down in a way that's palatable so that you can understand what the researchers tested, how they tested it, and what they found without a bunch of scientific jargon. And if we do use jargon, we explain it so that you can understand it. So you don't need a degree to read this review. It's gonna help you understand research a ton. And we're also gonna give you our honest opinion about the study. And sometimes we might even say, based on these authors' data, we actually don't agree with their conclusion. Now in this case, we did agree with their conclusion. When it's called for, we will tell you our own opinion. And what's more, we tell you what it means for you practically. And that's why we call it research explained in practical summaries, because so many research reviews out there just give you the information, but then they don't really give you any actionable data. They don't tell you what it means for you, or if you're a coach, what it might mean for your clients. We're really trying to take research and bring it down from the ivory tower so that all of you guys can enjoy the benefits of understanding scientific research. So make sure you click the link in the description, check out reps, and I'll catch you next week.